Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 4 of the chapter Equilibrium. Before we move on to the discussion of chemical equilibrium or equilibria in chemical processes, I think we should first summarize the equilibria in physical processes once more so that we have this foundation to work on when we move on to the chemical processes. So I've just summarized all that we have studied. We studied equilibria in phase transformations. We studied equilibria when there is a, a dissolution of a substance in um, a solvent, for example, water, dissolution of a solid or the dissolution of a gas in water. And then we just study some general properties of physical equilibria. Let me begin. This is what we've already studied in the previous parts. The first process that we studied was where equilibrium could be established in a phase transformation where, where a liquid turns into a vapor. For example, you had water, which is a liquid, and it turns into water vapor. And what did we notice about this equilibrium? That the vapor pressure of any gas, of any uh, gas that is the, for the vapors of a liquid, they are constant for a constant temperature. And if this pressure, if we keep the pressure to be the atmospheric pressure, we notice that at the atmospheric pressure or when the pressure is one atmospheric pressure, an equilibrium between the liquid state and the vapor state is established at a certain temperature. And that certain temperature is known as its boiling point. So substances, they have a fixed boiling point or they exist as equilibrium in their liquid and the vapor state at one atmospheric pressure, at a fixed pressure. This was what we understood about the processes where vaporization was taking place. In the second case, we studied about a process where a solid was turning into a liquid or a liquid was turning back into a solid, a reversible process, which means that uh, it is melting or freezing that is taking place. Again, we took the example of water, which turns into ice, uh, sorry, ice that turns into water, solid turning into liquid, and the reverse of this reaction was that the liquid water was turning back into ice and an equilibrium was established. Again, what do we know about this equilibrium? We know that at, if we keep the pressure to be one atmospheric pressure, then the temperature at which the solid and the liquid state will acquire equilibrium, that temperature will be a fixed temperature for a particular substance and that temperature for that substance is known as its melting point, right? Remember another thing about the equilibria that we studied that all of them have to be in closed vessels. They have to be isolated systems. You cannot carry out this equilibrium will not be established if you have an open system. It should be a closed system because if, if it was an open system, the reverse reaction would not take place. For example, if vapor is produced, the vapor will be lost to the surroundings. If a liquid is formed, the temperature will not be maintained to go back to that state. Therefore, we find that these equilibria, whatever physical equilibria are there, you need a closed system for it. Anyway, let us now come to the third part. You have a solute, which is a solvent, and we are dissolving a solid solute in a solvent, where I took sugar and water. And we notice that at a certain temperature of the liquid, and if I keep on adding the solute, I can only add a certain maximum amount beyond which the solute that I add will not be dissolved in that amount of liquid. At that point, we say that the solution is saturated. And now the excess sugar or salt or whatever solid that you have added to the uh, solvent, it will establish an equilibrium with the sugar or salt or whatever substance you added to that which is present in the solution in the form of the soluble uh, substance. So you have a solute which is in the solid state that is undissolved state and the solute which is dissolved in the solution and equilibrium establishes between those two. And this, at this, this is again a dynamic state where an equal number of molecules is entering the solution from the solid state as the number of molecules of that substance are getting back in, getting back in the undissolved form and settling down at the bottom. So what do we understand about this particular uh, type of equilibrium? That the concentration of solute in the solution, it becomes constant when the temperature is constant. Now this is something which is key here. 
Here we said that the pressure was constant, one atmospheric pressure or whatever is the pressure, that pressure should be constant and then you will get the equilibrium at a certain temperature. Here we say that the temperature, if you keep the temperature constant, the equilibrium gets established at any temperature and at that equilibrium, the concentrations, that is the mass of the dissolved and the undissolved solute, it becomes fixed. It does not change. Although the number of molecules entering in both the processes are going on at the same rate, yet if you weigh them separately, you will find that their weights would become constant. We have noticed that if you increase the temperature of that little water that you take, the amount of sugar that you can dissolve in it increases. Uh, you would have noticed that when you add sugar while making tea, if you add a spoonful of sugar uh, while making tea to the water which is boiling, you do not even have to stir the sugar all automatically on its own it gets dissolved. But if you add a spoonful of sugar to a glass of uh, a water which you are using to make lemonade and that water is uh, from the fridge and you add that spoonful of sugar you will have to use you'll have to keep stirring it for some time in order to dissolve it which means that the solubility of solid substances usually increases with increase of temperature so the solubility of that substance is dependent on the temperature so equilibria to form a saturated solution would be equilibrium will be established faster at a at a higher temperature you would be able to dissolve or rather the concentration of the substance of the solute in the uh, in the solvent dissolved in the solvent would be more in the case of higher temperatures so it is dependent on the temperature it is the same with gases when you have a gas and you dissolve a gas in a liquid for example you had the carbonated drink like carbon dioxide soda water bottles and the carbon dioxide is dissolved in the coke and carbon dioxide which is dissolved inside the liquid it depends on the pressure the more you pressurize it the more the gas gets dissolved and at a lower temperature it gets even more dissolved so the solubility of a gas it depends on the temperature and pressure. If you increase the pressure, solubility increases and at a higher temperature, it is less soluble. Therefore, if you have a cold drink, that is a soda water bottle uh, or a soda bottle, at a higher temperature, it loses its fizz faster because the solubility of the carbon dioxide at a higher temperature is lesser. Therefore, as soon as you open it, it loses the fizz. So this was just a, a recapitulation of what we have studied in the previous parts. And let us now summarize again the general characteristics of physical equilibria. The first, again, we have studied this already. We are just revising it before moving on to chemical equilibrium. The first point is that equilibrium is possible only in a closed system at a given temperature. Did you notice in all these cases, you have to keep the temperature constant. So equilibria will only be established when the, and you, if you really see if the system is closed, the temperature automatically becomes constant. Both the reactant and the product will be at the same temperature. So the temperature becomes constant. So equilibrium is possible only in a closed system and when the substances they are uh, at the same temperature. Opposing processes occur at the same rate and there is a dynamic but a stable state. Now what is happening in an equilibrium? Opposite processes, the reactant is turning into product, product is turning into reactant or you could say in a physical process whatever you have on this side we call it the reactant and the product. The opposing processes, both the processes they take place simultaneously and they take place at the same rate. And this is a dynamic state, which means a lot of activity is taking place in this state, but it appears to be stable. There is a balance between the, the concentration of the reactants, the concentration of the products, they become fixed and therefore it appears to be a very balanced state as if nothing is happening. All measurable properties of the system, they remain constant. During when the equilibrium is established, the concentrations of reactants and products becomes constant, the pressure is constant, the temperature is constant. So all measurable quantities, they become constant when the equilibrium is established. When equilibrium is attained for a physical process, it is characterized by a constant value of one of its parameters at a given temperature. When equilibrium is attained for a physical process, 
it is characterized by a constant value of one of its parameters. Did you notice? In all these equilibria when they were established, either the pressure was constant or the temperature was constant, one of these values has to be constant for the equilibrium to be established. And that temperature or pressure, whatever that characteristic is, it is, uh, it is, it characterizes that equilibrium. So it is characterized by a constant value of one of the parameters at that given temperature. The magnitude of such quantities, that is the magnitude of this parameter which is constant, that is if it is at a fixed pressure, if it's at a fixed pressure, fixed temperature, whatever is this value, that the value of that fixed amount also decides when will the equilibrium be established. Let me explain this to you. You remember I told you that the boiling point of a substance is uh, fixed at a fixed pressure. Now the boiling point of water at one atmospheric pressure is 100 degrees Celsius. But if we go on top of a mountain, the atmospheric pressure gets lower on top of a mountain. And if the atmospheric pressure is lower on top of a mountain, what happens to uh, water at that time? Uh, the water, it starts boiling at a lower temperature. That means the boiling point is affected by the pressure. So whatever this constant value is, the extent to which the reaction takes place. Now here, in, if the pressure is lower, boiling point, boiling will start taking place faster. So the equilibrium will shift towards the, you, you would say it would shift towards the right or we'd say quicker, it will be faster. The equilibrium will be established faster. Similarly, in this case, it was the temperature which was the factor. If you increase the temperature, the solubility of the sugar increases. So equilibrium shifts towards the right, towards the product. It moves, it becomes favorable for solubility. In the case of gases, if you increase temperature, the solubility of carbon dioxide decreases. So the equilibrium shifts towards the left and not towards the right. Let us say when equilibrium is favored, we call it it's shifting towards the right because if I stand like this, this is my right. So equilibrium shifts towards the right. And if it is not favoring, then equilibrium shifts towards the left. So whatever is the magnitude of this quantity which should be fixed which characterizes the equilibrium or that property which is fixed at which the equilibrium is established. The magnitude of that property decides the extent to what extent will the reaction take place. Will the equilibrium, will that temperature or pressure favor the products or would it favor the formation of the reactants. In other words, would it favor the forward reaction in the forward direction or would it favor the reaction in the backward direction? So that is decided by these parameters. So this is all that I had to tell you about physical equilibria. And now in the next video, I'm going to start discussing chemical equilibrium. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.